morning world and good morning everyone and welcome to our channel it's EO's marketplace news so guys I'm really happy and I'm really excited to share you something okay Q for what Q for question what is it Q for what again Q for question how will I how will it help me all right so this website I will be introducing to you a website where Q is the answer not the question all right so guys join me introducing Q is tomorrow's payments network all right initiative Q so to get millions to join we are giving away our future currency estimated future value of next spot 26,598 okay now what is initiative Q let's see so creating the global currency in seven steps but first what is really um, initiative Q so initiative Q is an attempt by ex people guys to create a new payment system instead of the existing old credit card system that was designed way back in the 1950s so this new system now uses its own currency called the Q and to get people to start using the system once it's ready they are allocating queues um, for free to people that sign up now so the amount drops as more people um, join so better to join now while it is still early right the system uses its own currency wow and the queue and to get people to start using the system once it's ready they're allocating queues for free to people like you who sign up now so the amount drops later as more and more people join so it's better for you to join now free while it's still early all right so that's just a brief um definition or brief insight of what is q so let's see creating the global currency in seven steps first step today's payment systems credit cards cash wire transfers are old and outdated which means we're all bearing unnecessary costs let's see more for example guys open your wallet and count how many different cards you have and how much cash you have to carry around are you opening your wallets all right the technology already exists to replace your wallet with a fast and secure digital payment method additionally the current payment networks were designed decades ago and their usage causes inefficient processing fraud and rigidity all of which translate to high cost right second there are many advanced payment technologies and innovations waiting to be deployed let's see more here are just few examples mfa methods to make payments more secure um, al to reduce fraud one global currency to eliminate currency exchange fees digital transactions to make transactions faster safer and cheaper all right now about the improvements and innovations that a modernized payment system could offer we can see more details here all right let's see ah so here guys now let's try to check that later on so let's proceed to step three step three so why don't we already have newer better systems because there's a chicken and egg barrier no buyer will join a new payment network with no sellers and no seller will offer a new payment option that no buyer uses exactly right great point so guys more a payment system is only useful if it's used by a significant number of both buyers and sellers getting to that critical mass of users is the challenge as people will initially be reluctant to adopt the new payment system this barrier has historically been the reason that previous attempts to deploy new payment systems have had limited or no success despite offering superior functionality whoa step four 
if someone built um, a modern payment system that implemented these technologies and somehow got buyers and sellers to adopt it, this system would quickly become popular. It could eventually end up seeing $20 trillion in transactions per, e per year. Wow. Credit cards already account for approximately $20 trillion in transactions. Once buyers and sellers have a better option than credit cards, they would naturally prefer it whenever possible and it would eventually reach or exceed that level. Of course, right? We always, um, we always choose where we can or we always choose which is better, right? Now, five. Now imagine this system created a dedicated global currency. Let's call it Q. According to economic models, the value of all Qs would be several trillion dollars. According to the equation of exchange in economics, a currency value can be calculated using the amount of money in circulation and the frequency with which it is used, so known as velocity of money. Thus, Estimating $20 trillion in transactions and using the global average velocity of money would give all queues in circulation a value of several trillion dollars. Okay, now you can read a detailed economic analysis co-authored Professor Lawrence White, an expert in monetary theory. Okay, <clears throat> next, Initiative Q is reserving this Q currency for people who join today. So the earlier you join, the more Q you can reserve. So the incentives to join start of, off very high. So those who have the four, uh, foresight to join early are eligible to reserve over a million Qs, having a potential future value of $100,000 according to our economic model. As initiative Q is widely adopted, requiring less motivation to join, those incentives will drop correspondingly. Eventually, it is expected that um, there will be enough Q holders, potential buyers and sellers, to make joining initiative Q rewarding enough without require, um, requiring extrinsic in in uh, incentives people will join simply because it's a faster, cheaper, and safer way to transact, right? And seven, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. As millions join, advanced payment technologies are deployed, the payment system becomes even more popular, the Q currency becomes valuable, and rewards given to early users reach their potential value. So guys, let's make it happen, okay? So it's free, okay? It's free, just sign up and your queues are reserved. So reserve your spot. Guys, guess what? I already did. I already signed up for QC. Hi Alex, welcome to the feature of payments. Right, so when you register, when you sign up, they will be sending you in an email so that you can confirm it all right so for the next 14 days you can invite and verify up to five friends and secure q2 one to seven for each your invite will allow them to also reserve queues early and help expand the network so see guys i can invite already i can uh, you, i can invite since okay all right all right when they send you or when they will send to you the um, code so you can verify then it will take you here this page now today you I can already um, invite up to five friends okay invite people you know personally and secure an additional Q10635 so guys, let's go back. Now here, simple. All you need to provide is your name and email address. It's true. Just your name and your email address. Why not? Think of it as getting free Bitcoin seven years ago. Think of it. Right? So sign up now. I already did, right? So let's learn more because I know that you want more. Yes, I know. So let's learn more about Q. 
year. Q's economic model. What is a currency worth? Every Q network member wants to know how valuable Q's can become. If Initiative Q succeeds in creating a world-leading payment network, it is expected that all Q's reserved today for members will eventually be granted at a value of roughly one US dollar per Q. So the following economic model explains the reasoning behind this estimate and the mecha um, mechanism used to maintain the long-term value of Q's along with the growth of the Q network. So value, the equation of exchange. Now here, the value of a currency is affected by multiple factors. The equation of exchange introduces the velocity of money defined as the total expenditures or income in that currency. It's divided by the money supply or the total amount of currency in circulation. So the world's total economic activity is around 100 trillion US dollars and the total amount of money in the world is between 40 and 90 trillion dollars depending on the definition of the money. So this gives a global average velocity of money of around 2, which indicates that each unit of currency changes hands roughly twice a year. In other words, at any given time, people hold money balances equal to around half a year's worth of income. All right? Now, therefore, in order to estimate the value of all queues, we need to estimate the volume of transactions on the network as well as the velocity of money. All right, so let's learn about the equation of exchange. You can play this video, right? Okay, let's play a bit. Today we're going to introduce an important tool for thinking about issues in macroeconomics the quantity theory of money. Let's imagine the journey a dollar bill might take in a year. Imagine that the dollar bill starts with Tyler, who buys a pupusa from Don, the street vendor. Don gives it to his daughter, who spends it on a pony ride at the fair. It ends up in the hands of Alex, who after losing it, and then finding it in his couch cushions, buys a cup of coffee while on a road trip to see his favorite polka band. So in- Right? So, that's it. So, Let's proceed. Volume. The global volume of credit card purchases is over $20 trillion annually. Since Initiative Q's unique distribution method solves the adoption problem and opens the gates to many new payment technologies, buyers and sellers will prefer it to credit cards. Q retail volume is thus projected at 5 to $20 trillion, assuming successful worldwide adoption. So velocity of money. In the long term, guys, Initiative Q's goal is for Q's to be used as a primary currency, meaning its velocity should be similar to the global average of two. Now, this goal will be achieved by financially incentivizing the use of Q's for all types of transactions, including wholesale, salaries, and investments. So additionally, Q will have a target inflation rate of zero, making it more attractive as long as term holding compared to standard currencies, which usually lose over 2% a year to inflation. Nevertheless, it is reasonable to assume that in the early stages, members will hold reserves as low as one month's worth of expenses, resulting in a velocity of 12. So dividing the economic activity estimate in the event of successful market adoption, that's five to trillion dollars. By the velocity estimate two to 12 results in a total value of between half a trillion to $10 trillion. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. So value, a cryptocurrency comparison. All right. An alternative approach to estimating the value of Qs is by studying the cryptocurrency market, which is another attempt to create a new currency. So, so far, cryptocurrencies have failed as currencies. Their focus is on ins ensuring scarcity, example that no one can easily generate new coins. 
but they neglect stability of value and ease of use. So this makes them ill-suited for trade with nearly all activity fueled by speculation. Despite these shortcomings, the market value of cryptocurrencies reach nearly one trillion US dollars. It is not far-fetched to assume that a currency that is designed to meet the market's true needs or stability of value ease of use, etc., and is exclusively coupled to a superior um, payment network should surpass this number. Right? So value of one Q. The Q reward reserved today are from a supply of two trillion Q. This means that um, all the rewards would be available for use at a rate of one USD. When all queues reach a value of two trillion US dollars, a realistic estimate assuming wide scale adoption as shown above. Right. Okay. Now Q monetary policy. Every currency needs a sound monetary policy in order to maintain public trust in its long-term stability. A currency whose economic volume fluctuates rapidly, complicates trades and finance, damages the economy, and eventually pushes people to use other currencies. Next, to maintain purchasing power stability, the total amount of money in the in the economy or the money supply should grow on pace with the economic activity and the corresponding demand to hold money. In most countries, money supply is primarily controlled indirectly through incentives given by central banks to private banks. Initiative Q also needs a monetary policy to maintain the currency stability, but as a global electronic currency, it is not bound by these hist um, historical limitations and can use more advanced monetary instruments while relying on accurate real-time economic data. These monetary instruments are detailed below, so it should be noted that Initiative Q's monetary policy will eventually be overseen by a monetary committee that is directly accountable to all Q holders and independent of the Initiative Q corporate entity. All right, next, controlling the Q in circulation. So the Q payment network's purpose is to facilitate trade more efficiently than current payment systems and currencies. So this requires that the Q be stable in value, so prices remain fairly constant and predictable. To accomplish this goal, the reward Q is reserved for each member Will, re will be released for use gradually at a rate that matches the growth in economic activity on the network while maintaining a target exchange rate of one US dollar per queue. All right? Now, they're really thinking of ways that can help our lives easier and more convenient. So that's why without thinking twice, I signed up. All right, I hope you will guys. Okay, let's continue. Monetary instruments. Q's main monetary instruments. Releasing Q's. Members who join Initiative Q can reserve Q's for free. With a specific number varying based on how early they join, these Q's will be released gradually as economic activity grows, enabling their use on the Q network and thus increasing the active current money supply. Two. Activity incentives. Additional cues can be issued to incentivize activities that promote network growth, such as cashback reward and purchases, a bonus and conversion from other currencies, and etc. This effectively creates a discount on queue based purchases, which in return attracts economic activity, um, with, which then requires issuing more cues and so on. So this positive feedback loop could fuel rapid growth of the network until it becomes a payment standard and can grow solely on the merit of its technological advantage. All right, three, open market operations. The committee can increase or decrease the amount of queues in circulation by directly buying or selling queues in return for other currencies. The, um, the committee can also sell future grants of queues 
at a discounted rate to accredited investors. These queues will then be released as economic activity grows, similar to the queues reserved for new members. In general, these monetary instruments offer much better and more direct control of the money supply than those used by today's central banks. Central banks are bound by the historical limitations of the fractional reserve system, a system that requires them to operate through private banks. This results in long response cycles and unpredictable inflation. So, we're almost done guys, just be patient. Money supply. The money supply must match economic activity to keep purchasing power stable. Therefore, since economic activity has no cap, the amount of Q should also be uncapped. However, it is extremely important that the money supply only grows in proportion to the growth in the demand to hold queues and not for other reasons. For example, governments that printed money with abandon to fund their budgets and in doing so uh, and in doing so transferred wealth from the citizens to government accounts by devaluing the citizens currency created hyper a hyperinflation and eventually made their currency worthless oh that's sad thus while theoretically at limited the q supply is controlled in practice this is done solely the, uh, through monetary instruments that may be used only for the goals of maintaining currency stability and promoting adoption so monetary committee Achieving currency stability requires careful analysis and prediction of economic activity, as well as consideration of mass psychology factors. This is, unfortunately, still beyond, of re um, still beyond the reach of computers and requires the involvement of human professionals. This is how government currencies are managed, with major currencies today demonstrating far better long-term stability than that of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So however, Initiative Q could surpass this with more focused and better incentivized management. So to meet this need, Initiative Q will feature a monetary committee that is independent of the Initiative Q corporate entity to be appointed via um, voting by all stakeholders in the Q payment network. This committee will be in charge of setting and running the monetary policy, determining how many queues to add or remove from circulation, and through which monetary instruments. Members of the monetary committee are financially incentivized to meet their goals by tying remunerations um, to performance. So since the Initiative Q Monetary Committee has access to real-time economic data and has, and has direct control of the money supply, their policies can be more scientific and transparent than current systems. So whenever possible, the output of the committee will be expressed as rules and functions that dictate the monetary actions to be taken given various economic parameters. These will be gradually updated in accordance with new insights, eventually reaching a steady state where the policy is near automatic, um, albeit with constant monitoring to detect anomalies. As an addition, means of instilling trust in the long term, purchasing, um, purchasing power of Q, the Monetary Committee will continuously offer to buy Qs in exchange for US dollars and other currencies. At the target rate of 1Q per 1 US dollars, this will assure sellers they can confidently accept Q as a payment method. So this requires the monetary committee to hold large reserves of USD. The reserve balance will be publicly available, assuring members that they can, con that they can convert to USD at any time, thus supporting Q stability. SQ becomes a global standard and trust in its long-term value increases, the reserve ratio can decrease. So these reserves are financed through two sources, 
Selling Q for USD. Buyers looking to benefit from the advantages of the Q payment network need to add Qs in their account, which is done by buying them from the monetary committee. 2. Selling further uh, future grants of Q. This option is available to accredited investors who believe in the long-term success of Initiative Q. They can, um, they can purchase the right to receive Qs in the future that will be released according to the network growth similar to the new members rewards. So guys, sign up now, all right? All right, so here. Um, the Q Payment Network, all right? So guys, I will be discussing the Q Payment Network for another webisode tomorrow. So, um, um, visit initiativeq.com I will be putting the um, I will be putting the um, what do you call this one I will be putting the link on the information on the description box below so, you, so that you can visit and if you want to sign up as early as today then you can I will also be sharing the link so that you can sign up there alright because Donald Lewis is inviting you to sign up at initiative Q. okay so guys what are you waiting for here it's going up it's going up right it's always going up so guys I hope that we will be our family in initiative Q will be bigger and bigger all right that's my prom uh, that's my promise tomorrow I will be giving you more information about initiative Q so that we will all be helping together and make our life easier and better all right so guys this is again alex thank you so much for watching this video and don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button all right bye